you know, we, uh, you know, you all alluded that, you know, there were some tweaks that had to be made uh, for real estate from the, from the previous version. Yeah. Can you, can you kind of expand on like maybe one or two key sure. like, points that, that differentiate this from, you know, from the profits first, you know, generally. Yeah. So the original book talks about bank accounts. That's one of the main practical steps is setting up specific bank accounts. So you don't just have the one of the biggest mistakes entrepreneurs in general, real estate investors included, is having one big account where all income goes in, all expenses go out. You feel like a king one day and you feel like a pauper the next, you know, king or queen one day. So that way, because we just have the money always flowing and you don't feel in control ever of your money. That's where in this book, we talk about splitting up the accounts to specific areas like profit and paying yourself and taxes and, you know, like your actual operational expenses, some core accounts that you build out and you set up inside of your business. But in the real, so I still talk about that in the real estate version and those fundamental accounts because they are fundamental. But then from there, I give specific real estate ones like OPM. If you're taking Carolina Capital Management or if you're taking hard money, private money, bank money, whatever, you should have an account that's different from your operational money, like to run your business. You should have a different account. So that way, it's, that's just for the projects. See if you're going over budget, you know, under budget, whatever. So that way, you know, that money is not being mixed in and you're creating an unintentional Ponzi scheme. You know, so making sure you're saving yourself from that. So that's one big thing I talk about in there. I also talk about one other quick thing, reserves. Reserves help grow your company. Making sure you're scaling. And I think Jonathan and Bill, you're talking about this, how Jonathan feels like you're not just growing to grow. We're scaling profitably. We're scaling at a, at a rate where, yeah, we might take a dip in our profitability, but at least we know we still have it. And we've made the conscientious decision to grow and say, okay, some of these percentage points are to now hire this person who's going to take care of this and going to get us to this next level. So being able to, you, you know, reserves help you grow. Another big thing I say about reserves too is most entrepreneurs, real estate investors live deal to deal. That's just the, the fact month to month, paycheck to paycheck, you know, just those types of things. We carry a lot of those habits over once we become entrepreneurs, if we don't have, if we're not conservative or we're not, we aren't saving already. And that's where reserves help you not to, not to live deal to deal by saying, yeah, I don't need that next deal. That next deal that comes across my plate with the slim margins. And like, I have to do some creative stuff here just to make the, just to make it work. That way you don't have to take those. You're able to make decisions from your purpose and not from fear, meaning like I don't have to have this and put myself as a motivated seller or buyer now, you know, and I can now just take a step back and say, okay, where do I need to deploy this? How can I get that next deal? Is it good for us as a business? I talk several other different things inside there about reserves. I talk about the real estate rhythms because like in the original book, Mike talks about making transfers to the accounts on like the 10th and 25th. Real estate investing is a whole nother ball game of like when you do, you know, like when income comes in. So I talk about that in depth on the types of businesses that, you know, real estate investing businesses. So those are a couple of the things that make this one different from the original book. Absolutely. No. And, and you, I mean, like since since you came out and, and visited us and kind of went through stuff with us, I mean, we, you know, just like you said, reserves. It'll, it has allowed us, we're more picky and choosy with what we do on our loans and we can yeah. be because we don't need, we don't need every loan to come through. We don't, you know, so like, you know, our, you know, our average loan profile has actually increased since, since you, you came in and spent that time with us. So it's, it's been a, it's been a life, uh, life changer for us and for the company. So I definitely, definitely agree with what you just said. Yeah. 